Ciao a tutti, siamo a Luca Comics and Games 2021, a rivedere le stelle insieme a Paul Azaceta. Hi Paul, how you doing? Doing good? Pretty good, not bad. Um, you know, it's great here in Luca, yeah. so I'm having an amazing time. Com'è tornare in Italia e in particolar modo tornare a Luca? So, how does it feel for you to come back in Italy and especially in Luca? Uh, I mean, I, I missed it so much. I, I came one time five years ago, whatever uh, it was, and uh, it was amazing. An yeah, amazing experience, everybody was amazing, so I couldn't wait to come back. Unfortunately, the world fucked up. Fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I couldn't, you know, but, but coming back here is, is one of the things I really wanted to do, and, and I'm, I'm very happy that I was able to pull it off somehow in between the pandemic. Senti, prima di cominciare a parlare di Outcast, mi piacerebbe conoscere e sapere come ti sei avvicinato al mondo dei fumetti e quando hai deciso che sarebbe diventato il tuo lavoro. So, the first question is, um, how did you um, get near to comics and how did you decide that it would, it would be your, your job? Uh, I mean, ever since I was little, ever since I can remember, I wanted to draw comic books. So it was something that when I saw my first comic book when I was uh, six, seven years old, whatever it was, uh, I think I remember my grandfather taking me to a store and we bought a three pack of Amazing Spider-Man that used to sell it in the grocery stores in those days. And, uh, and ever since then, I was just like, I fell in love and it was somebody, I never even, I have no other backup plans or anything, I just comic books was what I was going to do in my life. Sapendo che sei un amante del fi dei film horror, del cinema horror, mi piacerebbe sapere quali sono i film che ti hanno influenzato di più nella lavorazione di Outcast. So, as a horror movie fan, mm -hmm. I suppose, I would like to know Hi. which movies uh, influenced you the most during your work with Outcast. So, uh, with Outcast, that was something that I was really, I mean, horror, like you said, is something that I love, like that genre, I love the movies and, and books and everything. Uh, so when I was going to do Outcast, I was like, let me kind of study. So let me figure out like what I'm going to do and ideas about like techniques and this and that. So I, was, I watched a bunch of horror movies uh, and just in preparation. But my, my favorite one, I think that was actually Dario Gento, yeah. the Suspiria. Like it's like one that really influenced the look of the book because I wanted to bring, I love how he brought so much color into horror movies. Most, a lot of horror movies are very just dark and dreary, uh, but he actually brings a lot of color. Uh, which I thought was awesome, so I want to definitely do that. Uh, Alien, the first Alien, like, is amazing. I love the atmosphere of it. Uh, and then a lot of John Carpenter, you know? Prince of John the, Carpenter. Prince of Darkness. The thing. The, the, yeah, The Thing, The Fog. Like, all that early John Carpenter stuff is, like, my favorite. Like, and that's the stuff that's, like, it still to this day influences me. Like, even, even not horror stuff, like, just the way he, like, puts together a story and the way he, like, does it. It's amazing, so, I mean, it's one of my favorites, too. So che lavori prevalentemente con i colori, però so che per particolare per Salda Press avete realizzato un'edizione di Outcast totalmente in bianco e nero. Ti chiedo il perché poi la scelta di riportarlo anche a colori, pubblicarlo anche a colori, perché forse in bianco e nero avrebbe reso di più l'atmosfera horror. So, I know that you usually work with colors. Mm. Um, but Sal Salda Guys brought, um, brought in Italy the black and white version. Right. And My, my answer is, my question is, sorry, um, would it be more anxious, more, in a, in a certain way, more classic doing it in just black. in black and white? Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. I, I think you're right that definitely like a black and white horror, like the yeah. old Hammer films and all, uh, Hammer films and all so that are, are so like striking because of all the black and white and, you know, all that sort of, and the shadows and everything. So I, I definitely see what you're saying. Um, I, it's just the American market uh, is more of a color market. Oh, yeah. So that's why you know we did it that way there and stuff. But I was actually really happy when the, I saw what Sal the Press was doing. They're putting the black and white out, uh, Bonelli style, like a little, yep. you know, and everything. I thought it was like so perfect to to do that. And the black and white art is like, I work with Elizabeth Brettweiser, who's an amazing colorist on Outcast. Uh, but the black and white art that you see in the Italian version yep. is my art. Fully, yep. you know what I mean? Because I do, I do all the grays, I do all that. I do that anyway. Uh, so when I saw it in the Italian market like that, I was like very happy. I was like, oh, this is like what I, the art I did for the book, and you know, only only me and the and my vision 
kind of 100% pure <laughs> in a way, you know. Yep. So it was really nice. I, I, I think it's something I would like to do more of in the future. Uh, as far as like black and white work like that, you know, oh, and maybe in America too, like make them, you know, yeah. understand that black and white artwork can be as good. Uh, in, uh, in Skybound, hanno visto l'edizione in bianco e nero. Cosa hanno pensato? Um, in Skybound, they saw the Italian edition. Uh -huh. What do you think about it? Oh, they yeah, they, they loved it too. Yeah, they, they really liked what, like I said, they, they see my black and white artwork. So when they saw that you were printing it over here in Italy mm -hmm. uh, in that pure black and white mm -hmm. form, like they were, they were, they, they loved it. Like they, 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 they were like, oh, this is so great because they, they love, you know, I mean, like, you know, uh, we had a great relationship or we have a great relationship, you know, so they really liked what I was doing. So when they saw it, again, they, they were printing it just like straight from what I was doing, like as soon as I finished the page, like, like that's. Mm -hmm the final page, you know, like it's like, it's a, uh, we're all excited, you know. Um, parlando di Outcast, quindi di, di horror, ti chiedo, quali sono stati i dettagli che ti hanno permesso di trasmettere l'orrore, la paura, eh, tramite il fumetto? Io penso per esempio a questi sorrisi deformati dei personaggi posseduti. So, as, out, as Outcast, as a horror comic, I'm asking you, which details you think are more, um, more powerful, let's say, to, mm, to embody embody the, embody the broadcast, let's say, yeah. fear, horror. Right. I, I have this, um, this image in my mind, the smile of the yeah. characters when they yeah, yeah. possess, it's like, it's disturbing. Yeah, it's, yeah well, thank you. I, I tried. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think something that is interesting about comic book horror as a as opposed to movie horror or and other stuff is that it's it's something that really relies on the atmosphere and the tension and taking things slower and 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 not necessarily about a huge monster or this and that but like like those moments so the the facial expressions the 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 little creepy you know tilt of the head the smile the you know the shadows falling just right where like you don't quite see what it is or who he is or what he's doing you know like like all those moments like that are the things that i think like comic books really do amazingly like when, when you when you can do that and how you know and uh it's something that i again studying the movies and this and that that's something i was like i was trying to figure out like okay what is the difference though because you know john carpenter and argento they have they have music they have this they have that like we don't have that in comic books so like what can i do to kind of bring horror bring you know make it creepy make it weird and like oh i understand you know like looking at junji ito Yep. Like the Uzumaki stuff is I always always refer to him because he's so great at like all those weird you know like the weird body horror and type stuff like that and all those panels that are like really cool. So I try to do a lot of that kind of stuff and rely on that rather than the usual just like oh it's a monster, you know, yeah. which I feel like is not really scary to me. Like you know, like when I read Hellboy it's quote unquote a horror. Hellboy? Hellboy, yeah. It's uh, it's supposed to be a horror but it's it's not scary. Amazing book. I love the book. It's one of my favorites. Mignola, you know, but I mean, it's but it's just not scary, you know. It's just monsters and fun, you know. So I would try to, like, let me not do that. Let me do something different and try to do. So, so it was all about, like, a lot of it was, like, facial expressions and little moments. Una domanda che mi è venuta in mente adesso, visto che hai citato Giungito. Io non ho mai letto niente di suo, forse Uzumaki. Consigliami qualcosa da, da leggere. So, you just mentioned Giungito yeah. and I probably read just uh, um, Uzumaki right. and what other books of Junji Ito do you suggest to me? Well I mean like I, I, I haven't read everything either but he's uh, he has a book of short stories I'm trying to remember the name of it now but uh, he has a book of like short stories which is really cool okay. like especially if you don't know his work I mean you already know his work but maybe somebody else who doesn't know his work like there's a book that they have like a bunch of like you know, between five pages to like ten page little stories all to the other one and they can kind of get the feel for like what he does which is amazing, ma amazing uh, but was, I mean like anything he's done like you know, like Uzumaki is probably his most famous thing but like any of the other books is really like he, he's, he's just amazing like if you once you fall in love with like what he does and his kind of storytelling like it's you could just like go through all of them and enjoy them all yeah thank you no problem a good read uh, tornando a parlare di Outcast la sua particolarità, una cosa che a me è piaciuta molto, è il ritmo della serie, cioè che scorre molto lentamente costruendo comunque questo sentimento di ansia, di paura, di, di grottesco. E, come ti sei um, 
trovato a, a lavorare con Kirkman che arriva da serie sicuramente molto più dinamiche come per esempio Invincible e come hai cercato di rendere questa cosa graficamente so um, the storytelling in Outcast right. it's, it's, it's kind, of, kind of slow and I love this because it's anxious right it's yeah like exactly building. that's what we were trying to do like like i was saying like to go slower take your time build the atmosphere characters yeah. and uh and you're saying that what's the between that and the fact that he does like invincible yeah i was just saying that where are the other dynamic storytelling you know like how in, did in you other books. how did you manage to uh, go through this work uh, consider, considering the fact that uh, robert kirkman usually writes yeah. stories like invincible it's like a yeah it's like a train you know right so how yeah. did you manage to put it in graphics well i mean a lot of that was i mean both of us like kirkman uh you know despite you know invincible is big, but walking dead i mean you can see that he has, he's a huge horror fan as well yeah. you know so like when he wanted to do this book he wanted he we we talked about that wanted to do something different mm-hmm. he's saying i want to do something different with this book than i'm doing on the other book in fact the little um small panels Yeah, you know the little inside panels. Uh, that was like his idea. He was like, like, I want to do something to add more little moments without making them uh, take away from like the main action, but then having these little moments, these little things, you know, like add atmosphere, add little touches, add little things like that. And he wanted to add that. So it was something that we talked about going into it, where he wanted to do something different. You know, like I went, I went into it like, let me see if I can actually do horror where it's scary and like, and and, and people can actually be creeped out by a book, like a comic book. And then he, and I think he went into it doing like, I want to do something different than Invincible. I want to do something different than the other stuff. I want to do something, try this, you know, storytelling way. approach, this this style, you know. So we both kind of went into it that, and then hopefully, you know, that that kind of worked out, and then people seem to enjoy it. So. E arrivando poi alla conclusione, cosa pensi che ti abbia insegnato questo lavoro su Outcast? So, um, what do you think that Outcast um, gave you after? The ending. I mean, my in in my career, it, it's it's uh, an amazing accomplishment for me personally. Like having to be able to do a book like that with Kirkman and do it 48 issues, unbroken. Like nobody helped. You know, I was the only artist on it, covers and interiors, uh, working on it for six, seven years, whatever it was. Uh, that that kind of thing is like just you don't really find in the American market. Anyway, I mean, in comic books in general, I think, but especially in the American market, uh, you don't find that kind of thing happen. So, like, to be able to do that for me in my career is, like, an amazing accomplishment that I'm really proud of. Uh, and I don't think I might match it again in my career. So, so yeah. and then as far as, like, my own growth as an artist, too, like, it's doing something that consistently and that long. Like, I feel like I've learned so much working with Kirkman. He, uh, he's an amazing writer. Uh, seeing his scripts uh, every every week, every month and stuff and, and, and seeing what he's doing and, and talking to him about like his story and his approach and you know, I, I would bother him and pick his brain sometimes about like, oh, so what is you know? And then uh, it just kind of like helped me grow as an artist to the point where like, I feel like only now I'm actually really know how to draw comic books or, you know, like I feel like I was still learning so much in the beginning, but now that was like kind of like my, my education that, that outcast, you know? And now I'm actually drawing and writing my own book for image next then really? was, so yeah so I'm going to do that now so and I feel like that's because of Outcast because I was able to do that book and learn so much that I'm in a position now where I'm like oh I, I can finally like try to write more you know, try to actually write and draw and, and all that stuff and do it all myself and I want to see if I can do that now so I mean and that's you know the confidence of like having done something like Outcast and having that behind me now I'm like oh, I feel you know you feel, I, I feel, I feel stronger yeah I feel stronger and better and, 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 and hopefully like up, up to the task of like doing comic books uh, yeah, it's solo so. so hai appena detto che stai lavorando a un nuovo progetto per Image tutto da solo cosa puoi dirci di questo so just say that you're working all alone right. on a Image project right? yeah what can you say about that uh, well I can say that it's going to be out uh, probably in the spring of next year We it's, it's not it's not on the schedule yet I'm still working I'm going to work on it for like the rest of this year maybe um, in January uh, finish it and then put it out so that way that way it comes out like consistent there's no delays there's nothing uh, and it's gonna be a one self-contained book like 120 pages all together uh, and it's like a it's gonna be a little different than Outcast so it's gonna be more like adventure and sci-fi so post-apocalyptic kind of thing and takes place in New York 
with uh, with uh, you know one man and uh, he's fighting apes and and tigers and apes and tigers. Yeah, and there's, and there's a gateway to another world, so it's gonna be this fun sci-fi kind of adventure with like some bizarre, crazy sci-fi stuff thrown in. It's gonna be. Want to read it? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I, I'm I, I'm I'm really excited about it. I'm I'm really I'm like so into it right now. Like I'm just like I've been drawing. You know, I'm getting to, to the end of the first issue, so now I'm like way deep into it right now, and I'm really excited about like getting to draw the rest of it and, and, and showing people like, I can't wait to tell you um, you know can't wait to read it yeah can't wait to read it so Paul thanks a lot it's been amazing thank you grazie mille grazie mille hope to see you soon again in Italy maybe yes. in Lucca grazie mille noi ci vediamo in un prossimo video e buona Lucca per chi c'è ancora grazie